Hi and welcome to this week's episode of Reaper TV. In this video I'm going to show you something you may have seen when you're going through your installation process of setting up Reaper or whether it's a download or an update and that's the portable install option. So I'm going to show you how we can use that to take a copy of Reaper anywhere we want with us. So let's take a look at how you do that right now. So when you go on to reaper.fm and get access to the file. So if we go through to the download section, you'll see we've got all the options to download the 32-bit or 64-bit version for Windows or for Mac OS. I've already downloaded that. We end up with a simple installer file, or it depends upon which version you're working on. You'll have a different sort of version if you're using the Mac. So what we're going to do is double-click on that like I'd normally do to create either an installation of Reaper or to update as you can see, we've got the normal dialog box that allows us to go through and do the, the user license agreement and so on. So we say, yes, we'll agree to that. And you see we've got the option to install it to our hard drive as we normally would. Now, we can do a portable install, and a portable install can be done onto an external device like a USB stick. It can even be put onto your PC in the same manner as you would create a folder, drop it in there. What it's doing is it's creating everything in a self-contained folder that allows you to run that from any location without needing to install it. In other words, you can run it, you can move the folder, you can copy that folder to another location or to a different drive. Anything you want to do and everything you need to run that copy of Reaper is inside that one folder as opposed to what normally happens when you install a copy of software is it puts DLL files in different locations in Windows and so on. So let's just go through and do that. So we say, well, do a portable install. You can see that defaults to my root of my C drive. I can easily browse on there, and I've got a USB stick plugged into my PC, and you can see I've got it there. Click on that, I've got the option, and I created a folder in there previously called Reaper Portable, so I click on that and click OK. That will allow us then to just choose Next, go through and choose the options we want, so we leave everything as it is on there. This is kind of the best default options. They know what they're doing when it comes to sort of setting things up with a portable install. So we'll just click on install. That'll go through and install it. It's going to be a little slower because it's going on to a USB stick as opposed to going onto a hard drive. So it's inherently going to be a little slower. So we'll let that run through. Once that's finished, we'll take a look at what we have. So there we go. Everything is now installed into our portable installation. So let's take a look at what that's done, what's included in the folder. So let's just close that down. Do I want to run Reaper now? I'm going to say no for the moment because I want to show you what's inside the folder first of all. So we just click on no on that. And I just open up the folder on my USB drive. And as you can see, we've got a self-contained folder that includes the Reaper XE file. We've got all the different folders in there for themes. We've got effects and so on. Effects, chains, plugins, all the normal things you expect to see. If we open the plugins up, for example, you can see there's all the DLLs for the various different plugins that ship with Reaper itself. Now, also, you could drop your own DLL files in there if you wanted to. Now, one thing that's going to happen is if you previously run or you previously installed Reaper in a normal fashion, then when you run this, the sort of INI file is going to pick up the same information. So, in other words, a location for your VST files and so on. So, it may be worthwhile once you run this to go through and update those so it doesn't look for those and then potentially cause a problem if you run this on a different location on a different computer, for example. But let's just open up Reaper, let's just double click inside this folder and we'll see that Reaper opens up exactly the same as normal. Now for this example I don't have any theme or anything installed because it's a clean, complete installation. But you see everything is in there. If we go into the program settings and so on you can see I've got all the options for the different sound card and everything I've got in here or the audio interface, all the normal things you'd expect. And once we save that out, it'll save it into the Reaper INI file inside that portable installation. So if I take that USB drive out and I take it over to a friend's house, for example, plug it in, I should be able to run everything in exact the same fashion. Obviously, I need to go in and tweak the things like the sound set is the driver and so on for what audio interface they're using. But I have that portable install and it gives me that flexibility to be able to take this anywhere I want. And that's all there really is to creating a portable install for Reaper. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.